and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm actually going to start with a plug for yesterday's puzzle. Um, we called the video something like one of the best and easiest logic puzzles of all time. It was this one, um, Tight Spaces by Analytical Ninja. If you haven't had a chance to have a go at this, you must have a go at this. It is there are a couple of moments during the solve where you'll you'll probably fall off your chair um it it brought tears to my eyes it is just an absolutely fantastic puzzle um and i'm quite excited about this one we're going to be trying today which is uh this one's obviously a sudoku of some sort um but following last night's video we had two or three suggestions that we, we should try this one because it's it's got the same sort of quality. So one of the things I really liked about yesterday's puzzle was that it wasn't that difficult. We get sent an awful lot of impossibly hard puzzles, which are magnificent. Um, but we're aware that you probably don't want to watch two or three hour videos every single night of the week. So when we get sent things that have, a, you know, they're still super good in terms of beauty and joy, um, but they're not massively hard. That is exciting. And this apparently fits the bill. Uh, Adam Jaziri's Grand Line, which doesn't appear to have any lines in it. But anyway, it's got a very weird rule set. And I will read you that rule set in a moment or two. I've got a couple of things to mention first. I'm going to start by wishing um, two people happy birthday. I'm going to start with Matthew Haynes, um, a PhD student with car issues at the moment, causing much stresses. Well, Matthew, I hope that a uh, shout out on the channel uh, improves your week. Let's let's put it like that. So very happy birthday. And also to Rich, who has turned a secret age today. I think if you've been watching the channel for any amount of time, you will realize exactly what age Rich has reached. Um, your partner Dex wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout out, Rich. And Dex says there will be cake. So lucky you. Have a great day today. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to mention is what we've got going on on Patreon, which is our Sudoku hunt for June is the Planets Suite. Um, do I, have, I might have a do I have a picture of that? I might have one. Yeah, there we go. Um, and lots of you have been solving this. And I think one of the best ideas we've had recently, actually, is that we, we've asked you to send in with your answers little factoids about any one of the planets you like. And um, we're going to read out some of the best ones. But I've got to credit um, one of our viewers, Unthank, who has been coming up with, well, I, I've read three of the facts that Unthank has come up with so far. And they all made me smile. So I thought I would share them with you. So thanks go to Unthank for the following. <laughs> That's a strange sentence I didn't think I would be reading out today. Um, so starting with Mercury, because Mercury rotates slowly, there's a huge temperature difference between the light and the dark side of Mercury. Uh, so the light side apparently reaches 430 degrees Celsius, but the dark side is minus 180 degrees Celsius. Um, and of course, Mercury is liquid on Earth, but it would be solid on the dark side of Mercury and gas on the light side of Mercury, making it a wholly unsuitable place to do thermo Sudoku, <laughs> which I thought was interesting. And then Unthanks hit fact about Mars. In 2011, NASA launched the Curiosity rover, which of course went to Mars. Other man-made objects have been sent to other planets, but Curiosities is the longest lasting and has had the longest sustained period of communication with Earth. One can only speculate what this period of comms has been used for, but had Rover been given access to YouTube, the Rover's time on Mars would have allowed it to watch all of Cracking the Cryptic's videos 46 times over. And Unthank thinks, that therefore Mars is an excellent destination for Sudoku holidays. I love the idea of a Sudoku holiday. I'm not sure how practical it would be in reality, but yes, well, certainly not a Mars a Mars destination. But anyway, thanks for that th fact. And I'll read you one more, which was Venus. And Unthank remarks that Venus is the only planet in our solar system that has had a crossover success as songs by both Gustav Holst and Bananarama. And Venus is the hottest planet too, with a surface temperature of twice the ignition point of paper, 
which many of you will know is 451 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and that's why none of the backers of the Cracking the Cryptic Kickstarter book are from Venus, because the books would spontaneously combust upon delivery, um, which is true and also quite funny. Um, and that reminds me, in fact, um, one thing I did do this morning was to test the Fistimavel puzzle for the book. So I've recorded a video of my test of that and very, very, very good that puzzle was. I better not say too much about it, but um, there's information about the, the book in the, in the video description for any of you who are wondering what on earth I'm babbling on about. Anyway, thank you to Unthank and I will read out more factoids if, 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 they, if I find them amusing and good enough over the coming days. Anyway, let's read the rules to Grand Line by Adam Jaziri. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rule. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so used to saying normal Sudoku rules apply. I got discombobulated by the fact that normal Sudoku rules almost apply. Place the digits one to seven in each row, column and seven cell region. A six cell region must contain six different digits from the set of the digits one to seven. So let's just pause there. Right, so that region's got seven cells. That region's got seven cells. That region's got six cells, I can see that. Okay, so this region, which has got six cells, misses out one of the digits one to seven. Um, but the, the seven cell regions are normal. And every row and every column has to have the digits 1 to 7 in it, presumably, because this does seem to be a 7 by 7 grid. And then the last line of the rules just says that digits in a cage cannot repeat and must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. So that's normal rules. So those three cells sum to 9, but the way you couldn't do that is double one seven, because although those cells do add up to 9, the 1s have been repeated in a cage, and that's jolly naughty, so don't do it. Now, the way to play this puzzle is to click the link under the video, as usual. Um, but now I get to play. Let's get cracking. So, there's got to be a one in an eight cage. Have we got anything else? No, I'm going, I will pencil mark the one that has to exist. Oh, all right, so we know that one is one of the digits in this six cell cage. Actually, what is the disposition of cages? We've got... I've seen two six cell cages now. Oh, I see, and then we've got five. Yes, okay, so the, the way that the structure of this works is we've got five seven cell cages, four of which are sort of the same shape, and then the middle seven cell cage as well. So there's five of those, one, two, three, four, five, two six cell cages and two one cell cages. So, no, we don't, we don't know at all. The, 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 I was wondering if I could prove that the six cell cages had the same composition. But I don't think they need to. Obviously, whatever digits are in that six cell cage. Oh, actually, oh, I was about to say something. I'm not sure I agree with myself about so naughty brain brain stop telling me things that are wrong or at least aren't logical right okay well i'm going to do sudoku then i have been forced after a mere eight minutes to do sudoku that's absolutely outrageous where does that digit go in this region well, that's got to be a digit from one to seven. So it's got to exist in this region. So it's got to go there by Sudoku. And then that's going to propagate, isn't it? Then it's got to go there by Sudoku. There's a little gap. That's very weird. There's a little, is that my eyes? Or is there a little white gap there? What's? And then there is a gap there as well, actually, I think. There's no, there's no gap there. I don't know what's going on. That's, that's discombobulated me. Right, hang on. Um, what were we doing? So we were trying to get green. So green is in one of those cells. Yes, okay, but by symmetry, we must have the same thing going on from the other direction. So blue 
in this region must be there and then in the next up region it must be there now does that mean it would be very helpful if blue and green were the same wouldn't it if yes if and that would work actually if blue and green were the same then blue green would go here and that though ah <laughs> okay i bet that's what it is because the title is grand line and that would make sense but but is it necessarily the case that blue and green are the same oh well okay it is isn't it yes it is it is okay for this reason green is a digit in this puzzle and therefore it appears seven times in this puzzle now it can it must appear indeed it must appear once in every seven cell region so one two three it's got to make an appearance in there four five six it has to make another appearance in the grid but it can't go in either of the six cell regions so where is its seventh where where does it go for its seventh digit it must go in the corner here and therefore you can just say that well you can prove like that that blue and green are the same so that means we can do that and therefore by sudoku we get the line that's beautiful that's really clever i like that very much okay but what does this mean do we know what this number is we know we know oh we do we know it's not well no we don't we know it's not one um because if it was one the eight cage couldn't exist so if the eight cage is one three four we would know green couldn't be one three or four but if it's one two five we'd know it couldn't be one two or five uh hang on uh no it doesn't i was i was wondering if there was some jiggery pokery we could do by thinking about the six cage the six cage has to be either one five or two four so if that was two four then two and four would have to appear in the grid not on the green line but then that wouldn't actually restrict this would it no okay sorry um so what on earth do we do now is it i'm wondering now if it's some sort of law of leftovers type trickery although i don't oh although how easy is that to do it, well it isn't impossible to do because i guess yeah because we know that the composition of the six white cells now in the seven cell regions is exactly the same as the composition of the six cells in the six cell regions because what we've done is just knocked green out of every of every seven cell region um, yeah there 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 is definitely something i mean that that cell looks interesting to me now where does that cell go in the world i think yeah okay here's a question i'm not actually i'm not i'm not 100 percent. i'm just going to give myself just give let me let me have five seconds again to think about this Oh, now I think I've broken the puzzle, actually. Hang on. Ah. I thought... I thought I just had made... Oh, no. Hang on. Hang on. I'm thinking about this the wrong way up. That's not going to help you, Simon. Oh. 
Okay, I'm going to follow through with my thoughts there, which which were incorrect as I was thinking about them. But I'm still I still think this is marginally interesting. Where does that digit go in this region? And the answer is I don't really know, but it's definitely in one of those cells. And then where does it go in this region? And the answer is definitely in one of those cells. And that means in that top region, blue, which must exist in that top region, is in one of those three cells. Now, can we improve upon that at all? And the answer is yes, we can. Aha, ah, right, right, okay. I was thinking about it incorrectly before, but I've now understood. Right, where do we put blue in this column? And the answer to that is, again, we don't really have a clue. It, it's got to go, it's, it's not in this cell by Sudoku, but it's not in any of those cells also by Sudoku because it's already appeared in this box. So it's actually in one of two places. It's one of those two. And we can repeat that trick um, in this row. Where does blue go? And the answer is in one of those squares. So it's very symmetrical, this. But now I think we ask a different question, which is where does blue go in the top row? And the answer, because it can't go in these three cells or it will repeat in this top, top region, it's in one of those two cells. But then if we ask that question about column one and ask where blue goes, it's also in one of those two squares. And the only two square, or the only square in the grid that simultaneously is in row one and column one is that cell. So that is blue. And that must work backwards, mustn't it? Well, by, by that I mean that digit, let's make that yellow, does that go in that corner? Oh, this is sick. Oh, it's so clever. It's, yeah, uh, this is right. This is right. Because, yes, and I know I know where this is going. Because yellow, let's, should we just do it longhand? Yellow has got to go in one of those cells in each of these regions. So yellow in this box is in one of those three cells. And then yellow in the top row is in one of the, actually one of those two, because yellow here looks at this square. Yellow here is in one of those two cells. So now where does yellow go in column seven? <laughs> I want to say column nine, but I'm going to say column seven. It's in one of these three. And in row seven, it's in one of those three. So it's got to be in the corner. So it's not in those squares. And now look, now look. What have we got here? We've got a situation where blue and yellow are both appearing in an eight cage and blue and yellow are both appearing in a 14 cage. Well, how could that be? If blue, what's the most blue and yellow could add up to? Well, it's seven. Uh, and that would just allow this to be filled with a seven. And so if blue and yellow add up to any any less than seven, this would have to be a, an, in, uh, an ineligible number. It would have to be at least an eight. So blue and yellow add up to seven. And that means if blue and yellow add up to seven, that is the one. So the one is not blue or yellow. These two add up to seven. So this is a seven. In order for the mathematics of boxes boxes one and whatever box this is down here um, right now what does that do I'm sure that does many things we just have to work out what it tells us that seven you see <laughs> I don't really know how to do this but It's, yeah, it's very strange. This puzzle is, the geometry is weird. The, okay, let's ask the seven about this region. So that seven is in one of those three cells. Now seven, so it, oh, it goes here. Oh, it does, yeah, it does, it really does. Yes, because um, we know seven is not blue or yellow. And we know seven doesn't go in these two squares. Now, does this six cell cage contain a seven? Oh, yes, it does. Because the only digit it hasn't got in it is green. 
and green is not 7 because if green was 7 there would be two 7s in this column and two 7s in that row. So that I think is a 7. Now can we do better than that then? So 7 is in one of the... oh yeah it's beautiful again it's the same point. In fact it's the example point. You can't put 7 in this 9 cage because it would have to have double 1 to accompany it. So that's 7 which means this is not yellow because yellow is not 7. Oh I love this. This is this just gorgeous. So now yellow is here. So yellow is not there. Um, I'm just thinking about whether or not that can really be blue. Because we know blue and yellow add up to seven. So that would make that a two. I suppose there's no restriction on that. Um, anyway, look, that square is not 7. Can we put 7 in a 15 cage? Very much so. That's probably where it wants to go. Um, I feel like we can probably do more though with 7. Oh yes, where does 7 go in the middle box? Can't go in a 6 cage, can it? So 7's in one of two places. Just, just let me let me just think about this. Uh, that okay. So this is a cage here. So seven in this cage is in one of two places. Whoops. And this is a cage I've not pencil marked seven into. Now seven can't go in those two squares because that would put a third seven into these two columns. So seven's not there. Seven's not there by Sudoku. Seven's not there. So seven is in one of those two cells, I believe. And that and seven can't be here. Because if seven was there, you couldn't put seven in this region anymore. This is ridiculous. So that's seven. That's seven. That's seven. Seven is not yellow, so that's not yellow anymore. One, two. Oh, so 7 by Sudoku goes here. I've done all the 7s. And now these two squares add up to 8. And what did these two add up to? They added up to 7. Okay. And these two we don't know. All right. But, but can we do everything we've just done with 1? And the answer is I don't know. Because I did, I did make use of the fact that 7 couldn't go in the 9 cage at least. But we've got to try, haven't we? So what do we know about 1? Yeah. Okay, where does 1 go in column 7? It's not in those three squares. It can't go there, because that would have to be a 7 by maths. And 1 is not green, so 1 goes there. Now 1 and blue are different digits, so this is not blue. This is blue, uh, which we don't know the nature of. But does that mean that can't be yellow? It does. This is so clever. I, I love this. <laughs> because, because if... If this was yellow, we know yellow and blue add up to 7. And 7 plus 7 is not 15. So this square is, is yellow. Ah, it doesn't do anything. But that was very exciting. Um, okay. Uh, what about... Yeah, uh, oh, I see. Okay, where does 1 go in this row? Now, because we've got a 1 here, it's not in those squares. Now, if we put 1 as the blue digit, that would imply that blue appeared twice in this box. And that's not right, is it? So 1 goes here, um, which is probably helpful. 1. Mm, well, I say that, and then I can't do anything with it. Oh, 1. OK, where does 1 go in column 1 now? It's not there. It's not equal to 7. It's not equal to yellow from this box. It's not equal to green. So it goes there. So these two squares add up to 8. Is that the same? Oh, hang on. Now I'm getting confused. Things that add up to 8 were those two, weren't they? Which is blue and another digit. But that digit is not yellow. So this can't be blue. Because that would be implying that, that this digit and yellow were equal. And they aren't. So that's not blue anymore. 
So this, but this is blue, so that's blue. This has become blue by a virtue of Sudoku. And I haven't finished with my ones yet, have I? Because can I do one in this region? I can't repeat it in, ah, this is sick. You can't repeat it in the cage, so it must go here by Sudoku. Now, now what about one in, one is in one of those two, I think. And what about, I've not put one into this region. And can I do that? One is not here. Oh, look, that's annoying. So one is in one of those two cells, I think. Which is nearly good. I mean, we'd love it. We'd love to know it was here, wouldn't we? Because then we could get the five. These two add up to eight. And they're not one seven. So this is two six or three five. And one of those digits is blue, which goes here. Right, okay, so let's just take stock. We've done very well with ones and sevens, and we've nearly done well with... Yeah, see, look, I've not I've not pencil marked yellow. Oh, look, where does yellow go in this box? Yellow's not seven, so yellow goes here, and that's not yellow. So this is yellow, which means that's not yellow. And this is yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got all our yellows done. Yellow can't go with blue because we know yellow and blue add up to seven. Seven is not the same number as six. There's a knowledge bomb for you from cracking the cryptic. So, so now all we need to do, he says, desperately hoping this might work, is, well, this is a blue one pair, I think now, isn't it? because blue in this box, which must appear by Sudoku, has to be in one of those two cells. But that implies that we can't actually work out quite what's going on with blue. Because these, these cells all seem to occupy, you know, they're, 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 they're never quite aligned in a way that's going to be helpful. Right, okay. So how do we do this? How do we do this with some sort of a plum? What we could do... Yeah, I mean, it's almost tempting to do it, actually, is to do more highlighting. For example, that digit, whatever that is, we don't know. But we could ask where it went in, in this region, couldn't we? And I think it's got to go here which is in the 15 cage um, because it's certainly not yellow and it's not green and it's not one and it's not seven so that is there now does that help us can we do can we extend can we extend that logic somehow yes <laughs> this is weird where does purple go in that region now we know it's none of those digits, none of the other coloured digits, so it has to go here. So that digit and that digit must be the same. Let's make those orange. They're the sort of rump digits. Uh, this column is done from a rump digit perspective. This, ooh, that column's definitely not done. Where does, oh no, hang on, now we're getting stuck, aren't we? Purple is in one of these squares. Can we, ooh, don't like this all of a sudden. It feels, it feels like it's getting trickier. I'd like to be able, we know that this is an orange-purple pair. Actually, that's, that's a particularly clashing colour set, isn't it? Maybe I'll go grey. I'm already going grey. Bah humbug. Um, right, so now, well, what about purple and orange in this row? Yeah, we know that they go into not orange, no. <laughs> purple and the grey now. They go into those two squares, but I don't think we know the order. So purple and grey are in these two squares in this region. Now, oh, can we do anything with that? This this one being in the box with a yellow. Do we know what yellow and 
purple add up to or yellow and grey add up to? We know what purple and blue. Purple and blue. Oh. If that was purple. This is so. I mean, this is just beautiful setting. Honestly, it is. Look, purple and blue add up to eight from this 15 cage. So if I was to put, make this purple here, this would need to be blue, but it's it's not blue. It's yellow. So that can't be purple and has to be grey. And now if that's grey, look, that means that one's purple, which means this one is grey. This one is purple. The, oh, this has done these two as well. There we go. Boom, boom. Now, how's that? Well, I've got six purple, so I should be able to get the seventh. I think it's got to go in this column. Um, how many, how many greys? Five. Now, can we finish off the greys? I'm sure we can. That might be a foolish thing to say, but... Oh, maybe we can't. No, 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 I want to finish the greys. I mean, grey is in one of those two cells. And grey is down here in one of these two squares, I think. Now, that's... Oh, I see, but we then do it using this one. Oh, this is... Honestly, this is magical. This is just... Perf it's simply sublime because now look at this one somehow these cages are all interlinking and, and breaking the symmetries it's beautiful um, yellow here goes with gray to add up to eight so if we put this as gray this this we'd be saying six and eight are the same number which they're not so that's not gray and now the only thing this is allowed to be is one which means that's one by Sudoku and get rid of the ones. One is not the blue digit, so this is not blue anymore. This loses its color. This gains blue, which means that's blue. This is gray. Um, this is no longer blue, so that's blue. Whoopsie. Uh, this is now gray by force of nature. And we've fully, oh, not only have we fully colored the grid, but look, I think we have fully colored the grid. I now can do maths. Because yellow has just become five by maths. Now, where does you so now this square is a three by maths to make the nine cage add up. Now, does that has that gone into any other cages? Um, oh, it must have done. I suppose what we now know is this is a two six pair, don't we? Oh yeah, and the fourteen cage is done. Look, so blue, blue has become two, which means purple becomes six, and green is four, and that is how to solve the puzzle wow just wow that that is that's again that's two days in a row we have we have showcased puzzles that are just stunning and that one i think is slightly harder actually than the one yesterday the one yesterday made the most epic use of a trick i i mean almost that i've ever seen this this I had to think quite hard about. I mean, maybe it's because it made me do Sudoku, Sudoku so early. But the way that the cages all married together and the way you could basically just colour everything in. I mean, it's... it's That's breathtaking, Adam. I take a bow before you, my friend. Absolutely loved it. Again, let me know in the comments how you got on. I hope you had a go at that. And I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.